Nelson. Here. Tom Coons. Here. Emily Lee. Here. Andrea Anderson. Here. Aaron Cavett. Here. We'll stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America.
to Council. So one of the things that we want to discuss with you while you were here is um, we had a, a we wanted to discuss um, inviting the union to speak uh, if they would like to. Um, and so we wanted to make sure when I said you felt glad we wanted to have our board discussion about that on Agreements that both parties have agreed to, and uh, think about allowing them to have a, an actual uh, opportunity to speak if they would like to. So, uh, I'll answer question the question. You picture the union making uh, having a designated representative to, at a particular point in the meetings. You know, we'll get to that more in our stand up, present a side, and maybe field some questions from members of the That's the way I was thinking of it. What is the board of residents or Tom? Yeah, um, I think that uh, it would be good, especially if uh, you know, we really talk about the nuts and bolts of the, of the particular warrant. You know, kind of go into why they feel this is a good thing. Um, and I think in the past, they rely on us to do that. And I think it would be a good thing. Uh, member of the union speaks why they feel that this is a beneficial contract, why this, this is a good contract. And uh, to really maybe really answer some questions from the So, under the current model, uh, non residents can speak on the commission before. Um, I should have reread my, my past rules, but I think the way Unless there's an objection, non-residents can speak. That makes it easier for SMU staff to speak. Yes. Um, I guess my, I'm open to persuasion. My current preference would be to have a single point in the conversation where now is the time for the union member to speak and to maybe respond to some questions from before, but not have, like often what happens is speaker one comes up from the floor and addresses something to the school board and maybe the SMU or the, the superintendent or the, or the um, principal responds. Uh, and then speaker two comes up and the SMU and the principal responds. I'm not sure, you know, again, I'm not sure that the union should have the status of after every speaker they get a chance to respond. And, and let me be clear, we are, we are discussing this now and, and as a board to decide whether or not um, they have not been invited yet. Um, they're deciding that this evening whether or not they're to do that. And uh, if that were to, if, if, if indeed we do that and they accept, um, we were thinking that um, we would be able to hope that they would name a representative and that that name would be on the list that you would be in the beginning of the, the folks that, that we would be identifying who are non uh, residents of the school at that position. Uh, we don't have a long warrant, and uh, I think this is your probably the biggest warrant article. I have to think more. I guess this is your biggest question, so getting get the voters to be fully informed and to have the position of the union as well as uh, the board and the SMU staff on the ground. And what does the board have to do with the field of Again, again, they haven't been invited yet. I think that it would, as I said, give them an opportunity to showcase the parts of the level more. And maybe answer some questions, but as you know, I'm sure they should. I just have a, a question because I haven't been to your. How have you presented each board article? Have you split it up between board members, or has one person done it, or how have you done that in the past? We pretty much had one do it. Um, this is one of our shorter So, again, 
that it all depends on people do find it.
guess the pronunciation of first and last names is not never right. was strong. It's getting worse. So typically, that would be the, the superintendent, business administrator, special ed director, the, the lawyer, uh, rich, and again, if, if the teachers union and somebody were front on that, and, and then that would be, that would basically be the list for the body. That's fine, and the, um, we can do it as a list. Uh, the, the way it works is that the body, we, a single member of the body could, you know, could we could get through the first three non-resident speakers, and then the fourth one stands up, so we could say, I object. Uh, and then it, I would just call for a vote. Um, right. It would be the majority rule of the body, because right. the other might be allowed to vote. But I like having a single list that we present ahead of time, get it out of the way, and we'll speak things up. So, so, so two items, and, and, uh, and I know Bob reviewed this in Enrich as well. Uh, the school board has been noted for some of all those activities. We have a lot of that. And the other item that, that I had not written down, but Charlie mentioned the clerk, we do not currently have elected the clerk has left town. So, so we, we don't want to, we don't want to have a clerk. Um, so we have to we have to find a clerk. Someone who's willing to take the chance and do it. So I, I guess we'll, we'll probably try to get something up on the uh, website and see if anyone's willing to step forward and do that. So we need, uh, and, and we'll be discussing a little bit later on in the discussion um, the policy about the grant of care and I have a suggestion to make it a little bit more about a, a more meaningful amount for the work that we I may help one of your former clerks, so maybe she will throw books at me if I say her name publicly. Then don't. Then share it privately. Then please don't. If you would share that privately, that would be excellent. Okay. Or, or, or if you know them well enough, you can have to contact her. I think, yeah, she, I think she can talk about All right. Well, so we'll go no further with that. And now, Charlie, one other thing. Well, we we're not quite done here. Says there is one petition form part of it on the last day. It is um, it's advisory only, um, and uh, it can be changed at the, at the deliberative session. The reason for to change it it's, it's advisory only. And it's, it's very deliberative. It so um, I don't I don't know if you have any questions on it. If, if, if it's the last one. It's Article nine. Uh, look at ten. Uh, this one says. Oh, I'm sorry. Ten. I see it's a different form. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I thought it was a book. I did that on purpose so that it would stand out. But it's very good to work. I thought it was a book. <laughs> so the, um... And so I assume that, that you will ask for the petition to speak to it. Yeah. Uh, but knowing who the petitioner is uh, or the kind of... Uh, it's been pointed out know. to me that, that yeah, the, the, the first name on the petition isn't necessarily the judge. There are multiple pages too with first names, so you know, um, first before the last, so I don't know who it was. So and we don't know who the petition for is either. So um uh, it was delivered to the S and Yeah, that makes life a little bit more interesting. I my preference is to invite the petitioner to use the projection system and have it. There's to, to allow the petitioner the same right to process to present their case for for the water article that they provide to the school board uh, and the SAU. Um, so if I can identify who the petitioner is, that would be helpful. Um, I could maybe ask for Kate's help uh, publicizing through, um, uh, through the town uh, uh, email blast. Right, I know the series of Right, I think at least it has been, um, did she use the process of or has it prepared for those? I emailed it to her, but I have not heard that. So, so she does have it, she does have a list of all the signatures, which obviously has it, she has a copy of the whole thing. Okay. Uh, and certainly informally, if you have a sense that you might have been one of the people most in favor of the article, they sometimes will say, no, I'm not the, I'm the, I don't want to be the spokesperson for the water article, but I want to call Joe and call Sal. I don't know. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think it's probably best just to check with Kate or if anyone 
sitting here in those or standing here in those who it was just on the bell that they would certainly if, if they want to have a presentation you know, they can be accommodated. Alright, other things we from me about is the So um a couple of things on my list I think uh, we typically have to find so we took the flight at the start of the deliberative session. In the last couple of years, uh, we had students from the great school lead us in the pledge and let's me introduce them and let's you know, let us highlight the uh, what it is that, that the school the school the school warrant really is intended to serve. That's not a requirement. Um, if, if the principal or the board wants something different, that's okay. Um, but I wanted to ask what the preference was. I think it's wonderful that, that, that the students uh, get involved and we need, we need help from the principal to identify, to, to try to identify the students. It would be one or three, three, like, two or three, uh, however they feel most comfortable. Sometimes it's been uh, the president of the student council uh, with the, the executive board of the student council, something like that. But it could be, really it could be anybody. school board feels about this. Um, does, does the board want anything particular done to recognize Joe Conway and his service to the town? Or do you want to just you know, let me say a few words and get on the interest? I'll do it at the end. I think it's very appropriate for, for, for you to say a few words. Um, certainly, um, I think that's probably the um, best way to but this is the first uh, major public meeting since Joe died. Other than the budget. Other than the budget. But he had been the moderator for the school district for a long time. An incredibly long time. An incredibly long time. And I guess it, it, if someone was feeling moved to, to have a sentence or two, we would like to say it. And I, 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 uh, I may take the opportunity. Um, one of the tricky things in SB2 is the extent that you can 
get something wrong. Yes, and that, that has been Um, I don't think we need a supervisor's table cards, ballots, or a ballot box for this. Um, if someone asks you for, um, uh, I suppose I'm, I'm afraid we do. <laughs> we do have, we do yeah, have to have, have, yeah. they have, they have to be registered voters, so we have to have the colored cards and take all that back. Okay. Who arranges to get all that here? Well, isn't that a one of uh, well, the uh, town clerk? Okay. So, uh, I think we provided those actually. A little color coded sheets. Oh, did you? I'm pretty sure it comes from the SF Okay. A little color coded sheets, but the town clerk oversees the folks who leave with our color things that we would like to vote. Um, yeah, but like the little ballot sheets, I think you brought. The ASA provides those. Right. Okay. And I'm pretty sure, but I will double check. Okay. And actually, I was mistaken though. We were in the second, the second of the session. You were aware, Charlie, that we are on Tuesday. That's right. <laughs> did, did I, did, I, I want to make sure we, we keep trying to get that out to the public as much as possible. But, um, it's a good point. The, the town will be Saturday and then we'll be Tuesday. Yeah, this will take me to the Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Boy, that's not. Okay. <laughs> so, so I suppose if, if possible, and if it works with the school, perhaps there will be a place for some of those things, some kind of a ballot box and some of those things going to be carried back and forth. If, if the town will be So I don't know who uh, reaches out to take care of it. We're pretty much the list. Yes, Mr.
noted that there, there seems to be a, 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 for some reason, private property was called out. I'm not sure why. I think we called out and, 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 and anything launched from private property. I, I, I don't know why it has to be private. And then we'll just we'll, we'll go through the process and see if we feel it's something that we'll interested in pursuing that. And the Memphis School Board Association is that much further ahead. They, they, now, they, now have it. they will now have a sample of the calls. Should anyone else have that? Anything else? Any other discussion or thoughts or changes? All right, I'll clean that up then and, and put it on a future agenda for more consideration. Um, the only other piece that I have for tonight is in your packet there that the New Hampshire School Board Association has uh, annually done student scholarships uh, and since it's open to any members of any school board, so if you have children or grandchildren that are, are uh, either in college or are thinking of going to college next year, this is a wonderful opportunity for, for a line of people, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention as well. Yeah, it's just, it, it, it's, it's, and, I, and, uh, and, and thanks to Bob for bringing that up. Um, in the past, I think we've all received something on it. And this year, I did not receive anything on it, even as chair. So, uh, so thank you, Mr. Kinsan. That's a good event to remind us, especially as some of your children are missing. Okay. I know not yet. Not yet. Um, all right, I'm just going to jump in here quickly before the principal's update. Speaking of the New Hampshire School Board Association, uh, Ted Comstock has been, was the longtime executive director of the New Hampshire School Board Association, and he died just a few days ago. Um, he had retired just over a year ago, or a year and a half or so ago, um, and Barrett Christina had taken his place. Um, he, he, uh, I just wanted to just say that, that um, he and his wife just served tirelessly for so many years, and they always provided thoughtful, excellent service up to New Hampshire school boards, including this one. And they, were, they were very helpful in everything. So, um, so I hope you missed, and uh, sorry you didn't get to enjoy his retirement. Just want to let you know about One other piece to that is the services are next week, so if anybody would like additional information on the services, All right, and now on to the principal's update. So, vacation copy by surprise. Um, <laughs> what I didn't realize was, as soon as I got back, this was supposed to be into the SA, so that's why I emailed it to you separately. Uh, get out and pack. Um, so I gave you a copy as well. Um, just a couple of highlights and then things that aren't on there that have happened since I sent this out to you. Um, under the academia section, what I thought about doing um, for at least the next couple of months is to just give you some snapshots that teachers put out, um, either through their newsletters or their Facebook pages. Um, so I've cut and pasted a few different items from a couple of great levels there, just to give you a sense of what they're putting out there for families. Um, I think they're the best resources we have to tell you what's going on in school because they're working with kids more than I see kids. Um, so there's three or four bullets there from um, different grade levels. Um, on this next page, I just want to publicly give recognition to our library media specialist and library media aid for all the work they've done on the library. I know you folks have had a couple of meetings in there um, and had the evolution of the library since I got here in early July now has been unbelievable. It's um, a much more welcoming space for young children to go um, and staff to go. Um, it's spread out more so that kids can work in small groups in different areas of the library without being crowded or stuck in between some tall stacks of books so that you can't really see where they are and what they're doing. Um, so all of our tall metal stacks that serve the purpose are now going some of them got donated to the town library. I think that Fortier was um, reaching out to them and they were interested in um, taking those off our hands. They are still in use. Um, but the 
ones that are in now, there now, most of our kids can reach the cloud shelf rather than climbing the shelves to get a book. We had had a couple meetings in there. The transformation was amazing. just thought how much wider and developing it would develop the whole staff to make it. So I just wanted to publicly recognize, you know, that was their vision. And, you know, with this help, they were able to make it happen. A couple of items not on the list that I wanted to let you know. I uh, met with the chief of police, Chief Bashar, this week. Uh, he and I have been missing each other since before Thanksgiving, and I reached out to him um, because I had a couple of questions about um, some laws that the state had around reporting um, safe schools violations, that type of thing. Um, so we just missed each other before vacation. He finally came up with one of his officers. So we talked a little bit about that, uh, and then uh, the conversation about the truancy game. And I know we had that conversation through the budget process, and he did reiterate that he is the person that has often you know, been responsible to go out to the houses and knock on the parents' doors and you know, see why kids aren't coming to school. So I asked him if that's what he wanted me to do, was to reach out to him first, and he said that he would like to continue to do that for us. And I explained that through the budget process, we did there in case it arose to a different level, you know, possibly court level, um, or with the actual resources um, that we could have a little bit of more in the budget. Uh, but he, he thought that was a good idea as well. Um, and then the last thing we had um, our monthly PTO meeting last night. So, not in the calendar of events in my report are some upcoming family events. They really want to uh, try to do what they're hoping for is monthly family events. Um, so for the next three months, we had a family event to invite folks into the building after school hours. So on January 31st, um, we are going to publicize an astronomy event. Um, one of our parents have a connection with the local astronomy group. All of us. Uh, but it's free of charge to the PTO, free of charge to families. Um, they're going to come in and do a short uh, presentation video, and then they're going to take kids outdoors and um, do different observations, for some telescopes, stars, talk about the installations, that kind of thing. Um, the PTO is going to offer a bunch of other We do have a rain date. Uh, rather than a snow day, <laughs> since that's been happening a lot. Um, so on February 13th, that is our rain date. And if we don't need it, that is a rain day. They're setting that up as a board games night for families to come in and do board games. It's a couple of nights before February vacation. Um, the next night is Valentine's Day. So you know, their thought was, you know, let's do a family night. That way tomorrow night we can go out with the kids in the city. Uh, so, I think they'll put out information on that to families on whether or not you know, they should bring games, but we're also going to offer some uh, games through some of our PTO members. And again, they'll have refreshments that we can for folks to enjoy all of our games. And the last one that we've just started, this was uh, sort of the brainchild of our literacy specialist, Diane Pettis. Um, she approached me about doing a literacy night and getting the PTO to help um, put it on. Um, and she's just beginning to brainstorm different ideas that she's done in past experiences. So her vision is to have different stations set up, um, gym, a couple of classrooms, the library, have guest speakers to come and do a read aloud. And, um, she's thinking of community members that can come in and do some readings of their favorite children's books, uh, some crafts around different literacy materials, so having kids do actual hands-on projects, um, you know, some different types of events. And she reached out to the PTO you know, to have that involved because they will give them a chance to publicize themselves um, you know, as well as they can really start to get it going again. So, and, and uh, the date is March 21st. We were trying to do it around the Cross America Week, which is the first 
first week of March, but our school is just working on the song that week. Um, the play is that week, um, so we pushed it off a couple of weeks and um, it was still working. Uh, the last thing that um, they're trying to pull together is, and they've publicized, uh, Neil publicized in the school today, and the PTO president publicized with all members that they were approached about refreshments at the budget hearings. Uh, they used to do um, refreshments at hearings or delivered in sessions in the past. Uh, so they put out the call to membership to see if they'd be willing to bring in some different refreshments we could set up in the lobby with the table. Um, you know, have you know, grab a cup of coffee or a snack. Donations are accepted. It's something that, that has indeed been in place in the past, and then I think it ended up being not, it, it was the groups themselves, I believe, that stopped doing it. And we certainly was not, I don't believe it was anything to do with the school. I, I don't remember what it was. It was it. I ended up doing child care instead, so I had to leave my concessions to do child care, which is more important. So that's what kind of happened. So is that how it happened? I, I, know, I know that it sort of dwindled away. I can turn on the so, so, so the, the board has never had an objection as long as the school has had no objection because we don't know if it makes it messy or spilled coffee or donut crumbs. It might be good on a Tuesday night though when you're expecting people to come at six o'clock, you know, to have something to eat while they're here. I might get more people here. Pizza would be nice. <laughs> there has been a <laughs>
we were all waiting for it. Uh, and then now it's just done. I mean, last week we had three days, and it's gone really a lot. But the term is coming up in a couple weeks. And that means we're halfway through the school year already, which is crazy to think about. It is crazy. And then the following Monday after the terms, we start the second semester. And we get all of our new classes. <coughs> so that's so that's pretty much it. So what? Uh, how does exam other than the terms go? Is it like the finals week? Is it um, school to that or finals for well, ten days or finals is four days. It always will start on a Monday. That's for finals, you said. Right, for finals. And that will be four days, two exams on the first three days, and then one on the last day. And then also makeups on the last day. Um, the terms is the same setup, except it will start on Tuesday. Day. And it will start, it will always the day after or the Tuesday. And then we'll go on, on that Tuesday and we'll go on Friday. It's the same kind of setup, two a day and one on Friday. Um, the only difference though is midterms is not open campus, the final day is. So that open campus is kind of, you show up for your exam, you can do whatever you want, you should have come back for your second one. And also for study halls, that means, say you have like a study hall, your second exam of the day, you have to stay for that. Or if you have the first, you have to like, still have to show up. For finals, it's different. You can just show up when you have a test for your class. You don't have to be there for your study hall. And we try to change that through student <laughs> government. Yeah. We, we like really push that. But it's actually, like, the school wants to do that as well, except it's a like, state law that we have to go on those days because we need a certain number of school days. And the open campus days don't count as actual school days. So I guess those are, like, added on days. So, so they figure by final time, they know they, they know they have enough days. Yeah, by final say, we recharge 475 days of school, so they can just put those in an open campus, and they don't count as like the 175. But <coughs> the terms is different, and they can count those as actual students. So we try our best, but. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end, if you don't know until you try. Yeah. So. That's how it is with everything. It's too bad, pretty much. <laughs> We'll try to do something. Yeah, shut down. <laughs> and then, I mean, the administration usually has like a really good reason for why something is. God knows the administration. We can never think about it before we go into it. So we'll, we'll think we have a really good idea and then we'll just get shot down. So fast. <laughs> you try. Well, well that's right. Yeah. Well, welcome to the world. <laughs>
do have one more question um, about the district musical idea. I brought it up way back in the day of November, and I was wondering if there's any I think the board is all in favor of it, but it has to it has to go through the school to get to to see if to see if there's wants to be any um, um, well uh, uh, which were you able to reach out to Very nice, very good estimate. 
Second from Aaron. Uh, any discussion? Article 5. It's Article 5. It's Article 5. Article 5. That's right. We've done that before. We have done that before. That's <laughs> true. Uh, yes, that's why I'm like, where are we? Hold She's on. to the one that right. was in front of my face. <laughs> Sorry. Do we start at the beginning? Is that what you wanted me to do? <laughs> why? <laughs> Jump around. Who cares? <laughs>
if it if it passes or if it fails, that's going to be the guidance to the school board, and then the school board is going to have to have an inclusive discussion either way and decide what they want to do. But it's it's advisory only. If it if it passes, that will be the message to the school board to have a discussion about that. Um, but you know you, you're right; you don't have money in budget right now, so. Um, but it is advisory. Yeah, so it's advisory. We, uh, we don't have, we, we have not budgeted for this. Our, our, our budget does not cover sending an additional 25 students to Marshwood. That's a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, we don't have that in there. And, and, and the one teacher we might be able to pare down because of that, we need to cover that. <laughs> Doesn't so cover they, that. They don't make a quarter of a million dollars. Um, wouldn't it be nice if they did, but they don't. Um, so, so, it, so again, it's advisory, as Bob has been saying. Um, we, would, we have a, we will, sh should Article Nine pass, which we strongly hope it does. Uh, a lot of things are going to be discussed. So, okay. Hmm? Frowning. Frowning. Well, this is not. This is not. <laughs> No, but we've been talking. We've been talking about this for ages. Right. So. <clears throat> all right, so we, we remain, again we remain silent on that one. All right, so I think we're all set with those action items. Everyone else? No, another question? No. Andrea's talking. I have. So if you're all set with the Warren articles, yeah. we could use some signatures yeah. tonight. I brought them in to oh, the <laughs> All right. Is that from the, the Warren on that page? Thank you. Do you have like a... I have, I have originals to send right. you that don't say draft on them. Okay. Yeah. We could do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're moving on to um, uh, the first readings for... Um, for a number of um, policies, um, home education instruction and access to curricular and co-curricular programs, participation in public school activities by home educated, charter and non-public school pupils, instruction resources and instructional resource plans, I'm not reading that very well, um, access to public school programs by non-public charter school and home educated pupils, and student records and access. So have people had a chance to read through those and are there comments? Or this is my favorite part of the year. I didn't have any comments on this. I don't even know. I mean that's what they're recommending. Right? This is um N H S P A. Yes. I believe those are <coughs> Well, that's what, yeah, I mean, that's what they're updating the policies to be. Again, you're going to, if you approve those for a first reading, you're going to get another crack at them, too, so you can read them if there's any suggestions. I didn't see anything. Yeah. Nothing jumped out of me. Good. If, if that's the case, if perhaps a motion to accept the first reading. I make a motion to accept the first reading of the one, two, three, four, five uh, policies we just referred to. Lots of seconds. Yeah, lots of seconds. Any further discussion? All right, uh, motion carries. I'm sorry, to, to signify every, uh, did everybody vote on it? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So okay. <laughs> And now the second part uh, is the second <coughs> reading of the others. I did check with Bob um, early this morning when it occurred to me that we had made a small change to the um, IMDA, the Patriotic Exercises, and we, did not, we hadn't seen that printed. Oh, so it was in here. I thought that oh, was it wasn't in here. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. It was there. my, my fault yeah. then. It's my fault. There it is. Yeah. It's after ILDA. Okay, that was my, uh, well, that's where it should be. Yes, yeah, I'm sorry. My, my mistake. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, I didn't look as closely as They're I not really I don't know. It's, it's, in in it's in my pack. They're not real. Oh my gosh. In there, I know. Is this 
service for me. I got it. I got it. I got it. And that, that the, the, so the change looks exactly what we discussed. So, so is there further discussion on any of the um, second reading? Because we have an action item, we will, we will act on each one. Um, so, I had one, but now I can't find it. The uh, the service animals. Mm -hmm. That should be the very last one. I should have followed the paper on the exercise. Oh yeah, there was just some lost. Lost. there was just a typo at the beginning of the sentence. Of the service animal. Just going your way. Really? You go along with them. She said, what, after ILD? ILDA. IMGA is where the ATR is. Yeah, you're almost there. Should be the next thing. Oh, that first sentence? This is the one you might remember mentioning. Uh, verifying the vote up to that. 
I would like to suggest that we as a board take action tonight to raise that pay, including this year, to $250. Just for this one day, correct? And, and certifying the vote on election night. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, if, 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 if you want, it's certainly open to discussion. It's just a recommendation. I think that sounds like a lot of hours. Mm -hmm. it, could, it could be a lot of hours. And, and they have to, they have to um, send it in to be uh, published in the, in the uh, report and all those other things. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. We don't get the volunteers. That we need. Yeah. I mean, it is an elected official. I know, but it's still. I mean, it's it's hard. They got people doing this stuff. You're in, you're out. And yeah. Unfortunately, our town has done a good job of not paying folks very well. So I'd be very, very much in support of, of something like that. I agree. All right then, could I have a motion saying that we, uh, and, and it, will, it will be, uh, again, we haven't budgeted for it, but, but right now it looks like our budget is, can handle this, so. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we increase the amount School, the district to the district clerk, uh, the amount of $250 for services. Yeah. We have a second from Emily. Any further discussion? So all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All right, so that motion carries, and that will be going forward. Um, and again, it's not in the coming budget either, but um, we will have to pay that amount. And the other thing is, we uh, we have talked about child care, and we have talked about paying for child care. Uh, if there are teenagers or, or uh, who are doing it for community service, they will not be paid. But uh, do we want to try to set uh, for, for either for either the adults that are overseeing? I know we've had some uh, people step forward from the staff. Um, and said they'd be willing to help out. Um, and I know that we have, and I know that some board members here are working on making sure we have some teenage child care as well. And so, um, do we want to try to think about a, a payment, a payment for them, so that it's, so that we've really thought it through and we know what we're going to be paying people? Are you talking about for now or for the future? For the deliberative session, for this coming deliberative session, and at least, and, the, and to establish sort of a baseline, of, you know amount that we might pay per hour. I feel like, um, I, yeah, I just don't know, what, like, how many people do we need for, you know, I mean, if there are 20 kids there, we need a few. If there are three kids there, we don't need. <laughs> right, and, and I, I'm not, I'm just thinking it through. I'm not saying that this is a reason to not pay people to do it. I'm just trying to figure out in my brain how it would work and how we yeah. Who are they budget for it. Yeah. And you know, Who are they actually working for and all this? You know, it's like, I, I, I think maybe we could, as a board, sort of kind of think this through yeah. for like the future, kind of set it up a little bit more structured. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to have a um, grown-up slash staff member be kind of in charge, and, and I would say like giving that person some form of stipend would be a wonderful thing. And then if we had teenagers that are volunteering for community service hours, then you know they have a supervisor to sign off on that, and then. I feel like something a structure like that might have to go. Because particularly if the staff in this building is coming in here on their time off to help out the school board, I would like to acknowledge that absolutely with some form of generosity. But I think that's important. Mm -hmm. All right, so so what I'm hearing it, it is is uh, that, that we that certainly uh, if, if staff are, are sort of they, they may be volunteering their time, but we would like to see if they are also recognized with yes. something else. Uh, Rich, you want to? Uh, just a recommendation. If you're considering this for this year, I, I would recommend at least two adults, mm -hmm. um, because if you limit it to one and an emergency happens, then that one is gone, and you're left with. 
you know, older kids supervising younger kids. And, and, and to be clear, the staff here has been incredibly generous, yeah. and, and we sort and, and and if they are willing to do that, that's fine. Otherwise, we and we are we are planning to provide childcare, and, and and I think we're planning to do it with or without adult supervision. Correct? I mean, that's our was our goal. And so, and, and staff has been incredibly generous, and but. We also know that it's their time, and uh, I thank you for the idea. If there are two of you, great. And, and we should, and we will. Uh, yeah, I don't think. But, but at this point, not look at paying uh, any of the teenagers at all. Yeah. It, it would be a volunteer. Yeah, case, I can so. definitely see mine being like, I don't need the community service. I'll take the money. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Yep. I mean, he's wonderful. <laughs> All right, then, uh, then we will, um, we will um, sort of yeah, see how everything goes. I am not sure how you want to yeah. say that. I agree. I was kind of thinking we might taste some more help, for sure. Well, more help than kids. Yeah, <laughs> right. Don't <laughs> get a 20 teenager. Then what are we doing? What are we doing then? Yeah, I mean, it's an, it's an interesting point. And, 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 and maybe we can uh, formalize the, the, the wonderful adults and staff that come in on this role, and while it may seem very, you know, we don't, we, we don't want to do anything, we didn't want them to, to realize how, 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 how valuable it is to us, yes. and, and how great they are, are for us. Yeah. So we'll, we'll figure all that out as we uh, move through the next few weeks, okay, it, it, into that. So it, it may be, it'll be retro, you know, discuss it at our February meeting after it's over, and that way we know what's happened and who's been here and what's gone. Okay, thank you for all that. All right, now we will move on to um, old business. So we're going to uh, review the, um, we, we talked about reviewing, <laughs> reviewing the board goals, and this seems like a good time to do it. So we actually, um, so, some, of the, some of them are actually handled in some of the things that we've been doing as we go along. So our board goals, which are on our agenda, we had four of them. We did not necessarily order, put them in any particular order, but they were all important to us. So let's just take the first one, uh, which was to support the superintendent and principal to ensure success, a successful transition. Um, sharing institutional knowledge, that would be us sharing our institutional knowledge with, with the new administration. Um, communication avail availability, and making sure the board, the board is available to, um, to, to, to uh, communicate things that need to be and to provide clear directives from the board. Um, so I think it's probably appropriate to ask uh, uh, Bob and Rich to uh, chime in at this point as to how they think, <coughs> they think since, since a lot of this was to the board to be available to do things. Um. Sure, I'll, I'll be happy to start off and hand it over to Rich for his perspective as well. But uh, quite frankly, coming into a new position, the, one of the most challenging pieces is the institutional knowledge and you know trying to find out how things have been done in the past and, and how things were developed and what the processes were and procedures and, and um, I, I've felt very um, happy with the support that I've gotten from the board. I mean anytime I've had any questions or you know you, you, you've been very patient with me if I have to stop a meeting and ask you know, for a little bit of history involving something. Uh, and I know Rich and I have had conversations about certain things that have come up going, you know, where can we find the answers to this and gain a little history on this. So um, I, I felt very supported and, and I appreciate that. Communication and availability, I've found that, you know, when I send out emails or phone calls, um, very uh, available. So that's much appreciated too. Um, provide clear directives. We set the goals in the beginning of the year, and, and I, I find that at the meetings, when there's a task to be done, um, I've asked clarifying questions and, and very, been very good about, about that. One of the things that I mentioned to Judy when we had a discussion this past week was one thing that I find very difficult with school boards is when you table things, uh, and when you repeatedly table things, uh, and you're very good at not doing that. So I appreciate that because I've, I've worked with boards before that have repeatedly tabled things meeting after meeting after meeting, sometimes because it's a difficult decision to make, 
um, and it never gets easier. It just creates more problems. So that's one thing that I've appreciated that you know we don't table a lot of things. If we if we have something that's a difficult decision, you have the discussion, you make a decision, and move on. So that's that's certainly one that's been appreciated. Thank you. No. I just echo a lot of what Bob said. <coughs> the, the one thing that it reminds me of, I and just in last week's newsletter to the staff, um, I reminded them to be patient with myself and Allison in the office because we're still in our first year, we're still learning, um, and the staff has been great about educating us and you know, letting us know upcoming events or traditions that have happened that are important to the building and the people in the building and um, how things operate. I might not have the answers, but I know who to go to in the building to find out. Um, so my resource has been Bob more than you folks, but I know that it goes up to you from him when necessary. And I'm very cognizant that you know a majority of his responsibilities has so much work, but he's been very available when I need him. Um, and knowing that if he doesn't have the answer, that you're available to him. So it's been a very relaxing time for me to come and sit in front of the board and speak to you about what's going on here. I'm not always wondering, you know, what have they got up their sleeve for me tonight? Um, which is... Well, we can change that. <laughs> but it, it's yeah, nice. You're direct with us on what you need us to do, which is, I, I like that. I like to know what the expectation is. Otherwise, we're always guessing, hoping that it's the right thing. No, that's not fair to us. Well, uh, yeah, I, 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 and certainly we don't want anyone guessing. Always ask, if, and, and you, you indicated that you would in the beginning. So it's good. Uh, board, any board uh, comments on on this? I mean, uh, uh, this I would just would... like the table. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the feedback. So the, the, the second goal uh, was uh, consistent budget communication throughout the year, and this was communication from, uh, from again, our new uh, business administrator, um, relatively new. We know we've known Katie forever, but, um, <laughs> but she, she's relatively new to the uh, business, business administrator role. Um, and, and so one of the, th and, and to have the monthly reports at the board meeting, and I, uh, I'd like to thank both, both, I know Katie and Bob both worked on, on the, Format on the things that were coming in, and I, I think it becomes easier and easier to understand every, every time we and, and having the um, your your, uh, your narrative in the beginning each each month is very helpful. Other folks, uh, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah, and I would also just like to once again point out the amazing work that they did on the presentation for the budget committee. It was the clearest it's ever been. I have been shocked by how easy I've had it with the budget committee, and it is thanks to the two of you, and I sincerely appreciate it. So, thank you. Well, I've got to say, coming in as a, well, in any superintendent position that I've done, one of the scariest things is to not know where the financials are. Um, and, and be guessing, you know, where you're going to end up and if the numbers are right. And I never have to worry about that with Katie because she's outstanding. So it, that's, it, it, selfishly, I really appreciate that. So, so, so we seem to be moving, moving uh, forward with that one pretty well. Um, our, our, the, the next goal that's listed was to find a way to address paraprofessional compensation inequities uh, to make it a board agenda item and discussion, which we've been doing to make it a focus of the collective bargaining agreement negotiation, and to encourage para-representation at the negotiation table. So uh, I'd like to thank the negotiating team, because I, we did make that, I believe, a center point of our, of our negotiations. Um, and, and just tonight, we, we are directing the uh, superintendent to reach out to the um, union to have, have the union speak if they, if they care to, uh, to the collective bargaining agreement, so I think that's also uh, sort of a part of our commitment to, to, to becoming a team, a real team, working together. Uh, other comments on that, maybe from the negotiating team or from other folks? See, I mean, 
I think I think we can, we can clearly say that we are pleased that we were able to address not as much, <laughs> not as far as we would like to go with the para um, inequities, but but we, are, we made a big step toward them with this collective bargaining agreement, and we very much um, are, are, are working toward getting it passed. I agree, and we said it very well. I just want to echo that because I think it's a really big step because you, you've got, I, I can't tell you the difficulty in, in hiring um, paraprofessionals and, and, and teaching staff below uh, if they're not on schedule. I've gone through that in other districts and there's nothing more unsettling than sitting in some, front of somebody that you know you want on your staff and saying, well, you know, it's going to be this figure, but this figure's in the CBA, however, I need to take you back three years and this is what you're going to get. So, you know, to handle that and get everybody on step for the paraprofessionals is, is a really good step. Any other comments from the board on that? Uh, the last one is, um, you know, basically to continue to work with town boards and committees to pool resources. Um, find ways to measure uh, savings and things like that. I, I think one of the things <coughs> that I've is that Dick has been doing this all along. <laughs> that Dick has, has formed relationships with, with, with the uh, um, uh, a road agent and you know, the library and every, every place he needs to uh, form. That's great. Yes. So, so it sounds like that's going forward. If you'd like, I've got I've got some examples of that. Sure, you would like me sure. to just That'd quickly be great. go through these? Sure. Um, because this is this is one area that that personally I felt that we I've lagged on because I haven't gotten to a select meeting and I, I, I just haven't had time to do that. But in looking at some of the things that Dick's already done and some of the things that your school's already done in cooperative services for the town, um, just a, a few reminders: the the town provides. Uh, things like snow plowing and sanding and the use of the transfer station for hauling some brush off. Uh, fire departments visit every year and the police department visits the school regularly. Um, RGS provides <coughs> space for the uh, after school program, indoor and outdoor, some storage space, um, space for summer rec, local sports teams often use the facility at no charge. Space for town and annual district meetings. Um, space for other other uh, community members to utilize the building uh, from time to time. Uh, space for the police-sponsored bike rodeo. Um, and RGS also takes field trips to fire station, police station, town hall, water and sewer, Wentworth House. So a, a number of, of places around town. Uh, and then you know some future opportunities, perhaps sharing things like uh, mowing equipment, uh, facility director expertise, which it sounds like direct, uh, Dick's been doing that already anyway. So, you know, there, are, there have been a, a number of, of ways that you are doing that. I, I, again, I'm, I'm using my knowledge of other communities. There are other communities that I've worked in that it's been um, very separate in that the town does this and the school does this and we're not crossing over and um, and I don't see that in, in Rollins Street so that's it's pretty refreshing. And we've been bundling our oil for a number of years. Yes, that's, true. that's true. That's true. Thank you. So any other board uh, comments on any of our goals or So um, we're talking about, so um, 
we did we uh, we were able to get something up on the uh, town website, the SAU website of uh, for the. Uh, It seems like a lifetime ago. It seems yes. like a lifetime ago. But I went Monday by right. email and <laughs> Facebook and the town website to spread the word about the upcoming dates and especially fe the fact that the February 5th deliberative session is a Tuesday evening. Yes, we do have to keep, keep saying that to people, uh, to ourselves and to other people. Yes. Um, so uh, the other things that we, this, this is our last meeting before the deliberative, and so uh, we should chat just briefly about whether or not we want to have a handout at the deliberative session. Um, a mailer, a handout, I, I'm thinking more maybe a handout, I don't know. But, um, I, I'm, I'm assuming that we're probably going to do a mailer for the vote, because that's a long, that's that's over a month between the time they would have heard anything about the, the budget and, yeah. and, the, and, the, and the thing, and, and then, the voting, so probably a mailer makes sense for March. Yeah. But I don't know if we want to do anything further than, than we've already done um, for the deliberative. Yeah, part of me thinks a little highlight surreal would be helpful, but I don't know if it, I mean, people are going to the meeting, they're getting highlights. Right. That's right. And so, so, yeah. I, yeah, so a handout doesn't necessarily right. make much difference, right? And, and are we planning also yes. to have those? Uh, will, we, will we have the, still have the slides printed up? Um, yes. Yep. Remember, we yeah. talked yeah. about doing a full page instead of the two because you wanted it bigger, right? No, no, that's no, no. Those no. were full page on there. No, no, uh, no, 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 no. I want the projected one to look. I, I, I don't care what uh, the printed one would okay. be as small as it needs to be. Was fine. Okay. The printed one was fine. It's the projected one. The projected one, one is full page. So yes, we'll just, no, no. You have to change the font. You have to change the font. Yeah. Okay. Go to two right. pages for each. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. We'll see how. We'll see how big. How big I can get it. One letter on each. A spelling test. Sound it out, folks. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so glad. I'm so glad we made this. It. It's, it's not okay. printed. Okay. I get you. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I thought it was printed. Wow. It was a little small, but I was. See. Because I said to you, we're trying to save paper.
So it was very, it was a very interesting process. Again, that, that's six, seven years old now, so I know time flies. All right, so I think we're all set with that then. Are there anything else that you were, and do we want to plan to post anything? I mean, we're back in... Well, I think if that FAQ is ready, we, we could post that um, before, uh, before the uh, deliberative session. And I have a bunch of documents already on our website, so... Okay, we, those should, uh, have they been sent to, um, they, they should also go up on the town website. So, I think they go, they go to Tia. Okay. So I think she gets them off. And if you would, um, just let, let, let me know when they're, when they're gone so I can be checking for them okay. and, and double check the episode. Yeah, those need to be available. And in the past, have we had hard copies available in yep. places? So, and, and, and I'll bring them to, to the that. delivery. Yeah. There'll be some here, but do we have some available ahead of time? Yeah, um, I, I can pick some up and bring uh, them yeah, to the I, yeah. I have to drop the warrant off anyway for them to post the original at the town hall. I can bring some questions okay. with me at the same time. All right. All right. And if you leave it up there, I'll grab it from the table. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else then for? making everything as public as we possibly can. Okay. All right then, uh, we're on to our, our last ac action item here, which is the 2019-2020 school calendar. Challenges with institutional knowledge. Uh, if you've ever done school calendars, uh, they are different everywhere, uh, and there, there's very uh, little consistency from district to district throughout the state. So uh, that it's always a challenge to put together. The existing calendar for this year has 185, 177 student days and 185 uh, teacher days. And one of the things that I was looking at when I put this together, in your collective bargaining agreement, it, it, it says the teacher shall be employed 187 and a half days, and, but no less than 185 days. So I was a little confused as to why we had historically settled on the number that you settled on. So this particular calendar has 179 student days and 187 staff days. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. I put it in there for discussion um, and wanted your feedback on the calendar. So discussion? I, I know that one of the things we always hear from, from uh, administrators and teachers themselves is that they always want more um, instructional time. So. I, I don't know if, if, if there are objections to that, but if it, um, it's something that we've heard often at, sitting at this table. So, you know, certainly willing to hear what people have to say about that. So, are we questioning whether I mean, the students are 179 days? In your existing school calendar, students are 177 days. And this, by adding two student days, would bring it to 179 days for students next year. And then, and then keeping the uh, professional development days and other things that are not student days, right? The same. It, it, yeah, keeping that yeah. the same, then, then pushes it out to <coughs> as far as As far as start times, uh, PD days, I, I try to mirror the existing calendar uh, for next year. So, does this also include snow day buffers? Uh, well, the, the state likes to identify, likes each district to identify uh, a number of snow days and typically it just means the whatever's left in June. Um, <laughs> so, you, you know, if, if there were if there were uh, two snow days, then we <coughs> typically lengthen the school year by two days at, at the end of the year. If we were to have a, a, a miserable year and have 
let's say, eight or ten school days, um, then we would have to have some discussions as to, you know, will it fit or by the end of June or do we need to do something creative. Now, technically, the state of New Hampshire, it used to be by 180 days and then they went to 180 days or a, no, a set number of hours. And now, really, the only thing the state of New Hampshire cares about is the number of hours. So, the, the days themselves, um, you, you can have 177, you can have 180, whatever the hours are that, that fulfill the time commitment. And uh, many of us here may remember on the board that for the past couple of years when we've had we have had, I think we had eight snow days that all came in March, or February and March. Yeah. And, and, and just last year, because I have it here in front of me, we had, in April, we changed the school day to start earlier and later in order to get the instructional hours in that you get to get in for the, to, to um, satisfy the state requirements. The other thing that this allows you, if you look, you've got a teacher workshop in March, you've got a teacher workshop in May. Um, if you should get behind on snow days, one of the options would be to make those into student days um, to, to, to assist with getting the, the time in a little bit earlier. Um, you certainly could, you know, well, February is a little early, but, um, you know, could do that. It's early, plus we haven't had much in the way. And there's always, like, if, you know, if you get into the point where you have um, many, many snow days, you know, you can lengthen your school day, you can go on a Saturday, you can, you know, there are other options. You can go on the February or April vacation. Um, I'm not suggesting that any of those are good ideas, uh, but th those are options. And so just, just to clarify, you uh, didn't necessarily... Um, you sort of started from scratch. You didn't look at the existing calendar and say, well, let me make it look just like the existing calendar. You said, let me, let me see what the contract said. Let, let's see what... Uh, well, I mirrored, I mirrored it off the existing, cal uh, the existing calendar for this year. But mm -hmm. then I was reviewing in the contract, and I found it curious that we were at 177 days, um, mm -hmm. typically... For instruction. Yeah. yeah. Time. yeah. So um, I reviewed the contract, and I called Rich, and that's one of the discussions that we had, and I believe he got some feedback from, from the teachers. Um, and then I, I, for discussion purposes, because of the con the language in the contract, um, I added two more instructional days. Um, Gail, would this be a good time to invite you into the conversation? Yeah, I'm looking at a draft of October 9th of 18. I'm not sure if that's the same draft. Yep. That has the last student day on June 18th, which makes 180 days. No, I've got one on June 17th. The, the, I think the one that you have, the, the, the mistake on that one is that I was unclear on the November 21st and November 25th student-led conferences. Yeah, those are full student days plus additional half days. That's what I missed. For the professional yeah. staff. That's what I missed. That's why, I, originally I did have it on the 18th, but that's an additional day because you've got two half days for student conferences. See what I'm saying? So, uh, the end, the last day would be on the 17th of June. Okay, Ms. Matt, sorry. So, 179. Just realize the last, when the teachers' contracts, individual teacher contracts have come out, not just this year, it's mutually agreed that it's number three, section A, the school year is not to exceed 185 days devoted to school and educational work between July 1 and June 30. It's not just this year that we signed, it's not just the year before. Let's go back as far as 2000, 2001 with Denise Knoll signing. So for the past 19, 20 years, our contracts have always said not to exceed 185 days. Right, because technically that, I mean, that's correct. I, I don't, I had, I didn't have the history on why or how it was done. 
what I was going by was the collective bargaining agreement. And the CBA uh, dictates, I mean, yes, if, if, it, if any of those contracts could have included 187 and a half days, or you're right, 185 days, by your CBA. So I'm not, I'm not real sure why there's a, a range. <laughs> I, I, mean, I agree. I agree. And normally, normally our contracts. Says, you know, if you'd known that, that, that could have been addressed possibly if it's negotiation, but it's going to have to be looked at in the future because it's just. Well, yeah, it's a little fuzzy because it, it, it's. Yeah, I'm, I'm, used to, I'm used to collective bargaining agreements saying it's either 185 days or 187 days or whatever the number is that's negotiated. But I, and I like being a nurse. I don't like. I didn't, make, I didn't you know, major right. in political science. This is not my. I like being the nurse. I like everybody to be happy. But I just, I just realized, you know, Kevin, he says up to 187 and a half days. So that, you know, and this um, calendar that you said ends on the 17th needs that. So I just, we have to take caution when the teachers go to sign their contracts that they, you know, for, if they sign 185 days. Well, the contracts, the, the individual contracts that you get annually, the, those change every year. I mean, the salary changes every year, the well, track changes every year. The, I mean, but so the that's not the same for, for 20 years. So right. the same same days, yeah, the days on them have right. stayed the same for a long time, and that's very interesting. Yeah. So why that wasn't addressed in collective bargaining agreements over the next, last decade, I don't know the answer. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Seriously, that's still confusing. Pick another. Are there other comments you wanted to, or, or concerns? No, but you wanted if that to had been, the, the copy that I was looking at would have put us yeah. over that collective bargaining Understood. agreement. Right, it should be on the 17th. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. It, Clarification all around, even if the contracts have been signed like that. Uh, I've signed a few myself, so <laughs> yeah. And not, I haven't bothered looking at the dates because I just, you know, yeah, it never signs a contract without reading it, obviously. Right. Obviously. So, other uh, comments and questions from the school board on the, on the calendar? One question Do we have the same amount of um, professional development days this year as we've had in the past couple? Yes, yeah, the yeah, same. And those are pretty well spelled out also in the, in the contract. Because they are they are paid they are paid days for the teacher. Yeah, I for some reason so I was feeling that when we switched from the campus that might yet early release to no early release, we had the one per month. I, I think when is that true? I think that's why we went to the 177 student days as well, because um, yes. they're full, now they're full, eight full professional days. Okay. Except for the, the November half and half makes one of those days. That's what I missed first time around. So then are we saying that um, the school year, then if you go beyond, too much beyond there, you're saying that we would go over like a snow well, day. Is but no, a, a snow day is not a school day. So technically, teachers are not paid for snow days. Right. So a snow day is like a Saturday. Yeah. Okay. And it's just a non day. It, okay. Of course, we know in reality it doesn't work that well, way. <laughs> but but in, 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 in contract speak, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's then a in the contract, day. we cannot go past a certain date in June. No. In the contract, we can't go past June 30. We can't go past, well, that's state. In the contract, we can't go past June 1st because that's the end of the year. <laughs> July 1 starts a whole new year. So, um, and, 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 and also historically, at least um, for the past number of years, we have always worked closely with administration and, and, and the staff to find a way to meet the hours without running into that last week of June. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we really work very hard not to go into the last week of June for many different reasons. Plans and family plans and students, not our students necessarily, but students have jobs. And, uh, yeah. and so. oh, but other other concerns, questions, thoughts. Looks good. 
seems like a long way off. <laughs> so, and I know that we've, um, so we've kept the, um, I, I see that we've kept the uh, uh, vacations aligned with Marshwoods. At some point, did we, did we, ta did, did we talk about aligning a professional development day or two with Marshwoods? Does there talk about it? Again, Summersworth. With Summersworth for nurses, that's right, guidance, that's right. PE, people. We are from, 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 from where there's only one of six. Each right. one of you is good fit to work with some colleagues every now and then, right? And has, has that been, again, the board's not weighing in. You know, we want to make sure your needs are met. So has that been happening? Yep, the August day is March day at least, and October line up. Yeah. I met with. Uh, Superintendent of Dover, Barrington, Marshwood, um, and we, um, Northwood, Nottingham, and we talked about school calendars and we tried to um, get them close to each other and tried to mirror some of the professional development days. Um, we were successful in a couple of spots and unsuccessful in many spots um, because of, you know, you've got a, a main calendar and a New Hampshire calendar, you've got different uh, wording in your collective bargaining agreements, uh, so we, we, we got them closer, um, well, about good. as close as we can get, I think. But that's a good step. I mean, that's a... So uh, this is an action item for um, us to approve the school calendar, if we are so willing. And then to approve the school calendar. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. All right. All right. All right. Future dates. So we have a lot of dates on the calendar here. Uh, most of them we know. Uh, many of them we've heard them. So. Uh, we have our deliberative session Tuesday evening the 5th of February. We have a snow date uh, for the following Saturday if necessary. Uh, Valentine's Day, we will have our next um, Wallensburg board meeting. We vote on the 12th and, uh, of March. Then there's the uh, board meeting the 14th. Um, any new members need to be sworn in in between that time? We do have one seat up, and the sign-up period for all of our outstanding um, clerk, treasurer, moderator, oh, I meant to remind Charlie, I'll be <laughs> he needs to swing by and sign up if he's going to continue. Um, and, and one school board seat, um, the sign-up dates are January 23rd through February 1st. It's about a 10-day span, yeah. and so on and so forth. So those are At the SAU office. At the SAU office, right? We'll keep reminding you. Two dollars. It's going in the paper. No, it's week. zero. Oh, hey, how about it? It's a bargain. Zero dollars. It's a bargain. It'll be published in the Fosters on that. That's what it is. <laughs> one, of, one of the things that, that is changing is that uh, starting in February, our school board meetings will be held in the library uh, permanently in order to open up the gym for any other community events, uh, particularly basketball practice uh, going forward. Um, I would also just, I would suggest, I, I, don't, I don't know how big the group is for GTO, maybe see, if they, don't, if they need to meet in the gym, that's one thing, if not, maybe they could use another room too, just so we keep this space available for sports teams if, if they need it. But I mean, again, that's up to the, uh, you know, we, we don't weigh in on scheduling the gym and stuff, but um, try to keep it as open as possible for uh, community teams and whatnot. Right now, it doesn't conflict. Okay, that's good then. All right, we do have non-public, but before that, we will um, get closing comments from visitors. Tracy Loring, I just wanted to chime in on the sixth grade um, thing that's on there. I wanted to uh, remind the community that it's uh, more than just the 10,800-ish tuition that we're paying per child, it's transportation, it's special ed, it's um, all kinds of stuff. So it's, you know, 15, 16, whatever it costs per child. So it's not a quarter of a million, it's more like a half a million, or whatever the case may be. Um, 
for those 25 kids. It's a lot more than just the tuition. That's just the basic. The 10-8 is just the tuition, not all of the awesome stuff that is offered at it. So that's just my input there. There's more cost than just tuition per child. Um, I was really happy to hear that any handouts or FAQs we were talking about placing, let's get them up online. Let's get them around to the community because hopefully this will be a full gym. But if not, you know, for the people um, to get the facts in the media also is great. Um, as for the for the child care staffing, if you can schedule that, if you can set that up, if you can guarantee that the staff will be here, an adult or two adults, there will be a lot more young families that will feel comfortable because right now everyone's like, will there be child care, will there not be child care, and that kind of stuff. So it's kind of like, um, bring the staff, children will come, that type of thing, or staff, adults, or whatever. Um, I, I think that if there's a reliable child care option for the bigger meetings, I think that more young families will feel more comfortable, in a sense, safe to bring their children and know that, that it's a reliable thing whenever it's being offered. So that's my input, my input because I know as a parent, that's how I would feel. In the past, it's been, will it be child care, will it not be child care? And teenagers in that are, are wonderful, but it's good to have, um, to know that it's not just 7th or 8th graders watching young kids, or high school kids, you know, you have a, that type of thing, so that's my take on it. Thank you. Any other uh, public input? All right, thank you. Any, any board comments? We want to um, talk to Rich more about them, trying to see if, in fact, there are staff members that are interested. Well, I, I, believe, I believe Gail has stepped forward as a volunteer for the deliverer. For the deliverer. Oh. And, and perhaps another staff member, or do you, are you not sure about that? I haven't asked any others yet, but I will make sure I have another. All right. And, at least one more. and I know that... Uh, I think the rest of the board members here are working on uh, at least getting yeah, some yeah. helpers, getting, making sure that there are at least a couple other folks there. So um, feel free to chat with each other. And, and thank you very much. I think it will make a difference in the count to be able to, to say that. No, yeah, no. Or something. Okay. Anything else from uh, board members? All right, then thank you very much. We will have a motion to go into non-public under um, C. Um, the motion for going to non-public, we'll go into non-public. Second. All in favor? All right. We're going into non-public. Judy Nelson? Yes. Tom Coons? Yes. Emily Leach? Yes. Andrea Anderson? Yes. Aaron Cavanaugh? Yes. yes. 